Who's the most terrible of them all? It's Hollywood Lean. Welcome to Everyone is Terrible. I'm your host, Hollywood Lean. It's my favorite day of the week. And just like that, we are back. Okay, so joining me today, Miss Nikia. Kiki Boom Boom herself. Hi, guys. How's it going? I'm so excited to be here. You know, I love talk about Sex in the City and Carrie, honey. Nikki has been here before. Nikki Monet. She covered Samantha Jones with me. If you guys remember, you got to go back to those archival uh, episodes. Pull them out. Pull them out. That was a good one. And you know, I love Sam, too. That one was tough because, you know, I'm biased when it comes to Sam and Carrie. Exactly. We're here to break down all the terribleness of Miss Carrie Bradshaw. We're getting ready for the And Just Like That, the new chapter of Sex and the City on HBO. Let's start with the trailer. I just saw the trailer. Let's break it down. Hello, lovers. I loved it because, okay, so at first they released like this like pre-trailer where there wasn't a lot of speaking. It was just visuals. And then recently this week, they released a bigger trailer. And I love the bigger trailer because you get to hear the ladies talk. I got to see the outfits. Get to, I got to see some familiar faces. So I loved it. The kids, um, the new people. Because at first, you know, when they said, and just like that was coming, and they were adding all these new people, I'm like, what the hell are these new people going to do? What are they going to do on the show? But now seeing the trailer, I'm like, well, this looks good. This is 2021 and Carrie Bradshaw had to evolve. It's podcasting. It's Instagramming now. That's awesome. Don't you love that Carrie Bradshaw's a fucking podcaster now? Because everyone is a podcaster. Everyone has a podcast now. Everyone. The girl who couldn't work her cell phone now has to learn how to do Instagram. So that's what I loved about the trailer and seeing that. And even Sarah Ramirez, who like, you know, in the 90s, Carrie Bradshaw, like she said, wrote an, uh, an article about sex, where now in 2021, people are more open, people are fluid. So I can't wait to kind of see, like Sarah, I think is that character that's going to play that person who's a little opposite of Carrie, but just like Carrie. So I'm, I'm excited. The trailer looks really good. Well, she's a pusher. She opens up the trailer with Sarah Ramirez saying, have you ever masturbated in a public place to carry? And she says, well, not since Barney's is closed. But honestly, mood. Miss Barney's. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest store ever. I know. I miss New York. In truth, it took real work every day to be her, to understand her, to not judge her, is what SJP said when she told the Wall Street Journal this. But now, of course, she's returning to our screens via this reboot, and we're hoping that she's grown up just a little bit. Aesthetically, her fashion choices, she was a smoker. He and I are going to dive in deep. We got some specific things that we want to talk about. You know, carrying the bullshit bagels, pissing $40,000 in shoes, Oof. everything. December 9th. I remember when they announced December 9th, and I was like, God, that's going to take forever. It's next week. <laughs> I know. It's fucking here. The end of the year is here. You guys, we made it through this 2021 which fucking flew by oh my gosh i i'm still in 2020 right now you know what it's been quite a year it's been quite a year i shot a sitcom this year i went to el salvador oh, look at you Ugh, girl living the life i was watching you i was like look at him go i've been living my life girl i've been auditioning i've been living my life like it's golden okay, okay i know that's right hey jill scott living my life like it's golden living my life like it's golden <laughs> All right, well, let's get into it. Um, I want to start with Carrie as, you know, just like a friend, just Carrie the friend. And like the one thing that comes up right away is like Carrie and her, and her bullshit bagels. You know what I mean? Like, first of all, let's start with who buys bagels with no cream cheese? <laughs> Someone who doesn't cook. <laughs> well, listen. <laughs> they live in New York. Like bagels are a thing. As someone who is from New York. Bagels are a thing for some, because I know there's some New Yorkers who don't eat bagels. Like some New Yorkers, depending on where you're from, we eat a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich from the bodega. So when I, I remember for work, I had to order bagels and I forgot to get cream cheese. And I was like, fuck, I don't know that you fuckers. I don't know. <laughs> and I also don't cook. Well, that person should be fired because they should have asked you like, oh man, did you want cream cheese? They're supposed to give it to you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Bagels and no cream cheese. Like, it's just unacceptable to me. It is. Basically, Miranda has, like, a kink in her neck. I need you to come help me. And instead of Carrie being honest, because 
Carrie actually has a legitimate excuse. You know, once in a while she has to meet the editor. And instead of being like, oh my God, like I literally have to meet my editor right now. Like I, maybe I'll swing my afterwards. Like could Aiden go? Instead, she just sends Aiden over I there. Instead know. of like communicating, like she just sends Aiden over there. And so the result of that is Miranda getting mad at Carrie because She's like, you're like, you're a bad friend. Like, I would never send my boyfriend over to rescue you. And he saw me naked. Like, did he fucking tell you that? Mm -hmm. So Carrie feels bad. And instead of just telling the truth again, she goes, well, I'm just not good at stuff like this. I'm not good in a crisis. Aiden's better at stuff like this. No, girl, this is your best friend. Why don't you just be honest and be like, I'm so sorry. I freaked out. Now that I think about it, I shouldn't have sent Aiden, but I had to meet the editor. I freaked out and just sent him. I'm so sorry. She's wearing a fucking foam neck brace for Christ's sake. <laughs> Ask about my neck. She didn't even bring butter. She didn't bring jelly. You're absolutely right because Carrie actually had a legit excuse. All she had to do was say, like you said, girl, I have to meet my editor, but I'll come by after to check up on you. So like you said, it's different if you're like, yo, do you mind if I send Aiden and he'll come and help you? Give me the address and I'm going to send him. And then when I'm done with work, I'll come and get you. She didn't have to lie. And that's the thing with Carrie. Like, instead of just being honest, she's just lying. I'm like, girl. And I, with the bullshit bagels, it was one of those things where I think she was being selfish. Like, I think she didn't mean no harm, but it was like, let me just bring her a bagel to be like, hey, girl. That's why she didn't ask for the cream cheese, butter, or jelly. <laughs> it was like, hey, I love you. Here's a bagel. And it's like, no, bitch, you didn't bring anything with the bagel. Miranda's like, you're just here to talk about Aiden. They're a fucking decoy. That part. The girl got a brace on it. And you're talking about Aiden at the your boyfriend just seen my fucking JJ, my cooch on the floor, my neck is broken. So you came over here to talk to me about your man. Girl, get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> I would have told her. I do love when she goes, got me jelly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We need something I'm like, with bagels. I'm, I'm a butter and jelly person with bagels. I don't do really cream cheese. So that's why I'm like, you oh gotta bring God. something, Carrie. That's why Carrie was like, oh shit, you're right. We do need something. You got any jelly? Like, this shit is some dry ass bagel. It doesn't matter how good the bagel is if there's nothing on it. And when you're the strong friend, people don't normally check in on you or check with you. And they expect for you to be strong all the time. So that's why when Miranda's going through something, everyone's like, oh, girl, you'll be fine. Yeah, you had a baby. Who cares? We don't know. Like, we don't give a fuck about your PTSD. Like, you know what I'm saying? Your post-traumatic uh, stress. You fell on the floor, hurt your neck. Girl, get on up. Because Miranda's so strong. And that's how she <laughs> presents herself. But now that I'm in my 30s, I've always loved Miranda because she was so sarcastic and so blunt. So though Carrie is one of my favorite people on the show, Miranda, I was like, I think I'm a Miranda Moon, but a Carrie Sun and a Samantha Rising. And maybe like a Charlotte Venus. Oh, we're doing the Sex in the City astrology. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, okay. But I love Miranda. I, I love Miranda. She's fantastic. She's the most balanced. But Carrie did shit on her a couple times in the sense where it was like, you know, like sometimes stuff happens where we're like, we got to revisit the situation. Yes. I need to reassess why we're friends because what you just did was shitty. And you said something about her being pregnant. So I want to bring up the time that Miranda got pregnant wanted to get an abortion and mm -hmm. carrie spent three days wandering around the city musing over what would have happened if she hadn't gotten abortion she went to go visit the guy at the fucking restaurant That's all while funny. charlotte despaired over her own fertility issues way to make it about you bitch like way <laughs> to make it about you i mean i will say i know we're supposed to tear to carrie but the, and she did hold Miranda's hand and took her to the clinic but you know, it's one of those things where it's carries the character where it's always about her. She's a little selfish where it's like, I hear you, girl. But when I had to go through my abortion, <laughs> it's like, no, Carrie, bitch, no. And you know, you want to have a friend that does relate to you. So that's why, like, I, you know, she did hold Miranda's hand. And when she was going through going to the clinic and when Miranda changed her mind, but when she first found out about the abortion, it's like Carrie girl. <laughs> and, and and you're right. She was there at the end, but it's just like, did you really need three days to wander around the city <laughs> wondering about your abortion? I could have a 13 year old child by now. Like she literally spent the entire episode wondering, wondering, listen, wondering as a woman and a woman listening to this, that's something that uh, some of us have probably thought ourselves. <laughs> Time is money, honey, and we don't need three days of you wandering. That's a that's a fact. Like, let's get it together. Or are you thinking that Aiden's gonna judge you if you had an abortion, girl? It's fine. 
I'm like, Aiden, you want to judge me for that? Maybe we shouldn't be together. Bitch, I was 21. That part. I'm like, bye, Aiden. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> okay. I mean, I mean, I mean, we need to talk about. Remember when Aiden was like, I can't date a smoker. Well, first of all, you're being awfully judgmental. Second of all, he is very judgy. We need to do an Aiden episode. I know people love Aiden and Carrie, but I'm like, mm mm. Oh, honey, we did the most terrible men of sex in the city. Oh, good. Because I'm like, Aiden? And you know who was on the episode? Who? David and David. Hey! Do you remember David and David? They had the threesome with Samantha? Yes. Well, they wanted to have the threesome with Samantha. And guess who was the most terrible man? Aiden? Okay, Burger? Because that's who the fucking most terrible was for me. Yes! Fucking hated Burger? Burger. <laughs> we voted. We voted Burger. Good. I hated Burger. This bitch Burger really broke up with this girl on a post, and I'll tweet that. And someone's like, "You must be watching Sex and City." I'm like, "No, I'm just triggered. I just think about Burger. Like he was so insecure." Like, she gets arrested that night. It's so good. When it comes to Big, is he's the changer. He's the one that changed her. First of all, we should not try to change anybody, men, women, whatever the dynamic you want to do, two men, two women, it doesn't matter. You should accept the other person for who they are, especially this late in the game, you guys. Like, we're all, you know, we've all been running around the field for a while. We're no, we're no spring chicken, so right. to speak. So you can't change an old cock. That's just how they are, okay? Period. That's the thing with older men, too. It's like, bitch, I can't read your mind like and then don't do this whole thing like i'm going to paris like you can come we're in a relationship bro like and she is just upset that she wasn't even factored into his life right but when did he factor you in before that uh, facts <laughs> to let you know that we're at this stage in our life because i remember you stalked his mom because he thought it was too early for y'all to meet. You didn't listen and you took advantage of the situation and found out where they were and you stalked that him and his wild. mom. Like that was wild. That was that episode. I was so pissed. I'm like, girl, if you do not go home and you got Miranda with you, I'm like, if y'all don't go home, slippery gloves. <laughs> you couldn't stop, you couldn't stalk him on social media. So she's like, Miranda, let's just go to the church. And of course, they dropped the Bible, but I'm like, girl. You can't change, like you said, you can't get in relationships and try to change these people, especially when you see red flags. That's when it's time for you to leave. And that's, you know, something where it's like you should have left big and you can't change them. Now, yes, people can grow and people can compromise in relationships. And I think that's something that eventually he learned how to do towards the end. I know what you're feeling. You're like, no, 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 no. We are giving Big way too much of a pass. You got to go listen to the Terrible Men episode. We're not here to shit on Big, you guys. Yeah, I'm not I'm not giving Big a pass, but we're not shaming him today. There's a whole episode. Carrie. Carrie. Who spends $40,000 on shoes? Yeah. In New York City, in that kind of economy, I mean, your rent is already a couple grand, even if it's rent controlled, like that's probably a good price. So housing people try to get the old people out because the old people are only paying like $200 and expensive apartments. So they try to push them out so they can charge people thousands of dollars. So, you know, she probably was in an apartment that was not $4,000. I have 900 in my checking. I was like, <laughs> or she's like 900 in my savings. She's like, I just paid my credit card bill. I'm like, this is embarrassing. But my girl always had like a Manolo bag. She was always at Barney's. I'm like, how are we affording this, Carrie? Exactly. This is what I'm talking about. This is the <laughs> nitty gritty, you guys. Like, this is Carrie Bradshaw in her terribleness. But you have to remember, this was 20 years ago in New York City. Yeah. And when Candace Bushnell wrote her book about her life, Sis was living her best life. And this was in the 90s when she was right. You know what I'm saying? Like, them at 35 is not us at 35. Yeah. Like, where Charlotte was able to live on the Upper East Side, Upper West Side, and lived in this amazing apartment. Samantha was doing great things in PR. Carrie, though, she didn't have a fucking checking or a savings account. My girl was still at Barney's. Them at 35 is not today at 35. Yeah. And that's why I'm excited to see the new show, to see 2021, and to see how, not them, but the new people, the new cast of people are living like the younger folks because it ain't what they're is not what they were doing 20 years ago and, exactly like, like carrie wasn't even a writer so to speak she was a columnist right. on right. a newspaper 
And then later in her like late 40s, she got a book deal. Like it was way later and it wasn't even a real book. It was a collection of her essays. So like then later in the movie, you could tell she really starts writing books. Can't rush the process. <laughs> You're right. Like it wasn't, maybe we shouldn't feel bad about ourselves. Cause like, no, it, don't feel bad. Like it takes a while to get to where you're at. Yeah. I love watching these shows and imagining shit, but I also remember too. I'm like, this show started like 98, 97. You know what I'm saying? Like them at 35, it's different for us at 35. We're just getting our footing. You know what I'm saying? So we're doing great things, but we are not where these ladies were. Well, even if you think about the characters and where they're at right now, 2022, we're seeing Carrie who has, like I said, was a columnist most of her life. And then she got uh, a nice lucrative book deal towards the end in almost her 50s. And it seems like just now she's thriving in the new show, mm -hmm. doing a podcast. So it's like, you guys, it really is all about the journey and we have to enjoy it and just go with it, you know? But just don't Absolutely. spend $400 on shoes. 40 times she had some great she has some great shoes though but please like let's <laughs> yeah let's focus on like our accounts our big accounts with my girl's closet my girl has good shoes but the moment when you couldn't buy your apartment back and i feel that adulting is hard as fuck and saving money is hard but girl let's let's lay off the shoes for a little bit let's lay off the bags charlotte my life is a fake fendi <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, so we talked about like, you know, the whole relationship aspect and then like the friend thing. And I just want to kind of just still kind of venture on the friend route. But what I'm kind of talking about more is how, how she treats like her gay friend. Like Stanford is always an option and never a priority. Even in the movie when Carrie wants to get big to go to the red carpet because they're feeling a little too Mr. and Mrs. She's like, fine, I'll go with Stanford. It's like, Stanford's fucking married, bitch. How do you know he's not available? How do you know he's not throwing a dinner party? Like, how do you know he's not, you know what I mean? It's just like, oh, I'll just go with him. It's like, no, we're not a fucking option. You need to ask us, like, we're the priority. Like, even I remember at Smith Jared's, like, opening, he's like, I had the worst seat in the back. And she's like, not, not now. Now you're sitting with me. Now that my boyfriend left and I'm alone, it's like, just like, <laughs> you need to stop being a bad fucking friend. Like, but I do remember the episode where she meets that other uh, gay guy and he's open and he invites her to the restaurant and Stanford runs into them. And she's like, oh, Stanford was like, oh, OK, <laughs> you forgot all about me. And she's like, no, this is my other friend, Stanford. And Stanford was like a little jealous. Yeah, we all have different friends and it's OK. But I like that Stanford called her out when he seen them at the restaurant together. He was like, oh, what? Oh, OK, now you remember me. I'm not saying like you have yeah. to call me like you can go to the fucking gay club without me. But if I'm your gay best friend, why the fuck wouldn't you tell me? I love Stanford and we see him in the new trailer and I, you know, we have to talk about the fact that he has passed in real life. He died in, peace, really. in the middle of this production. So I already know it's going to be written into the story. You know, it's going to be written. I in. know. About it. You're sick and you're telling them, you guys, I'm sick, write it in the show because I'm going to die. And then he dies in the middle of the fucking show in real life. And I, that's what I think, because there were all these photos about a funeral and everyone was trying to guess who it was. And it makes me think because, you know, he knew he had cancer. It makes me wonder if he was open about it uh, to like Darren and the creators of the show where they wrote it in. I don't know. That's what I'm curious about. Oh, God. It's to see him in the trailer gave me chills a little bit. I was like, oh my God, look at him. He looks so great. So it made me wonder because all these like paparazzi photos were coming out about a funeral. So people were like, oh, is it big? Or is it um, Mitzi Vaughn? What's her face? It was people were speculating funerals. Is it Samantha? I'm like, no, they would never kill Samantha off. I was like, but then when he passed away, I was like, you know what? I wonder if he was open about his disease and if he shared it and he was okay with them writing it in. I'm, I'm curious about that. She just completely dismisses Stanford at the fucking fashion yes. show, not just in the beginning, but remember when she has to wear the jeweled underwear? She won't take anybody, adv anyone's advice but Samantha's. 
She's like, go get Samantha. I know she'll tell me the truth. I would be like, bitch, I've been your best friend for 20 years. You don't think I'm going to tell you the truth? You look fine, you skinny bitch. Yeah, it's all about Karen. Big fucking left you jilted, and we had to spend four days in Mexico, and your ass spent four days in a room in the dark. <laughs> tell them how you feel, Leon. <laughs> Well, that that was validated, though. No, no, no. That was validated. That was validated, but you couldn't do that at home. No, because well, you got to think about it. It was there. They are the ones that said, "Let's go on your honeymoon. Let's yeah. not forget that." Like my man, my husband, the man I've been chasing for ten years, bitch ass, leave me at the altar. I, you gotta die. <laughs> it's paid for. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Hey, like, well, you know, again, like she didn't want to go, and I think her friends did, you know, so she wouldn't fucking jump off a bridge. It was like, girl, let's go do a friend's vacation. You can stay in this room all day, but we're gonna get you out the house. So I, it's one of my favorite scenes because it made me look at all their friendship and be like, yo, they, they're some real ones. They're like, we got you, girl. We getting you on that fucking plane. Because there were some favorite. fashion choices for there sure. There were some fashion choices, honey. Um, Especially in the beginning. Um, I remember there's this like Chanel tie dye outfit at the cafeteria one. Oh, I love that shirt. <laughs> remember but that? I'm, that I'm, I'm weird though. Like I, that's why for me, because I'm weird and I dress weird. The things that people probably thought were bad, I love that Chanel fucking outfit. Like it was I love vintage. That. It was vintage. I, I'm very vintage. I, I let that sparkle get. I like things that people don't like. Yeah, because I know that you won't wear it and I'll fucking kill it. But she's had some interesting, like, I'm trying to think of like, because it was something I seen and I was like, what the fuck is she wearing? Okay, um, you, I do, I do remember a dress and it's iconic and it goes with my uh, last point to um, a reason why Carrie's terrible. And then Nakia's going to give us a reason as well. Yeah. But so, so my, my reason is okay, so here's the thing how she did Natasha. <laughs> Because here's the thing. It's not my motherfucking fault that I was in Paris and he came and fell in love with me. Like she says, it's not my fucking fault that he fell in love with me. It's not my fucking fault that I was in Paris and he came to me. Y'all going, y'all going it's hate me. not my fucking fault when I married. Like, it's not my fault. But here's the thing. It's, yeah, How so are you going to do all that to Natasha? She's going to fall down, damage her tooth, and after the divorce is finalized, you're back on the dating scene. Your ass doesn't respect any boundaries. Not only did you ruin my fucking marriage, now you're fucking stalking me and coming to find me in a restaurant when I'm on a date. Like, bitch, you are terrible. This is all just to, like, make you feel better. Oh, oh my God, I can't believe there's someone in New York that hates me this much. Bitch, who gives a fuck? You fucked her, man. <laughs> Listen, unpopular opinion about the Natasha thing. I don't know you, sis. Sorry that you fell down the stairs. I didn't tell you. Like, she should have never been in that space, in that apartment that she he shared with Natasha. But you breaking your tooth, you, like, that ain't got nothing to do with me. I, unfortunately, we love the same person. So I'm, that's what I'm going to say. Like, I don't, I'm not your friend, so I don't owe you anything. Yeah. But, but you should have never been in my house if they were. And you, if you fucking up on, you're fucking this guy, you guys should have went to a hotel, right? Yeah. You should never even be in my house that I have to chase you and fall down and hurt my tooth. And then you trying to make yourself feel better about yourself, not respecting my boundaries. And I'm going through a lot of shit and I'm divorcing this guy and I'm already traumatized. I already knew about you in Paris because all he did was probably talk about you. So you're the girlfriend that I had to fucking compete with. I don't need you coming to my space to apologize. Like, and I know selfish people do that and people will do that because they don't want to feel shitty about themselves. And that's exactly what Carrie did. She didn't want to feel shitty about herself. And she didn't respect Natasha's boundaries. But I don't blame her on ruining that marriage. That's a big thing. Sorry. <laughs> she should have never been in that woman's house. And she should have never went to go fucking find her at a lunch. Yeah, that's weird. Like, bitch, don't fucking find me. I will beat your ass. Especially when you called three times and I said, bitch, I am not interested. Didn't she, like, she called. She was calling her job. Carrie, please. And again, Carrie is selfish. And it's like... I just want to make sure you don't hate me. Like, you know, when guys break up with you and they're always like, I just want to make sure like you don't hate me. Yeah, I do hate you today. Leave me alone. Don't fucking call me. Yeah. So yeah, she she was terrible for like stalking Natasha. That's wild. So walk home in your newspaper dress that I fucking love. Oh, the greatest dress of all time. I know. 
I love that dress. Oh, iconic. That scene where she's doing that slow walking and she has to fucking live with her choices, her bad choices that she made. <laughs> I'm like, yes, bitch, I am terrible and I look good and my titties are bouncing. Okay, she's like, I'm a bad person, but I look good walking she's down right. the street. But yeah, that was terrible. Like, leave yes. her alone, Carrie. And that's why I'm walking away and I look good with this newspaper dress on. Baby, that, that walk, that cinematic, like, chef kiss, that dress. And I love what you just said. She's like, she had to live with her choices. <laughs> My girl got to live with her choices because Carrie made a lot, a lot of bad choices. You know what I'm saying? I love her as a character. But again, she's made some bad choices. We've all made bad choices. But she had to live with that shit. And she had to eat it. What you did was wrong. And you're going to take this long ass walk down this block. We're going to make you look good, though. <laughs> One of the reasons why we saved Carrie until the end, you guys. Carrie is the most terrible character of Sex in the City. Dun, and dun. this is why. Nakia, do you have um, a specific instance you want to throw in there? Like, closing that lid on why Carrie Bradshaw is the most terrible. Yeah, so I will say this uh, before I go into my reason. You guys know I love Carrie Bradshaw. I love her, love her. So, um, <laughs> biggest, biggest Carrie fan. But... I think all four women are good friends, but they all have terrible aspects about them. And Carrie, um, my friend Monique brought this up and I was like, damn, this actually is good. It's when they go to Abu Dhabi and she bumps into fucking Aiden. And, you know, Charlotte is just being the friend who's like, girl, like we've been here before. Like, do you think what you're doing is very smart? And the way she <laughs> snaps at Charlotte, bitch, don't snap at me, ho. I'm trying to make sure you don't cheat on your man. And we talked about this earlier where Carrie does this thing when she's with men, she puts men first and she kind of forgets about her surroundings and paying her bills and her friendships. So when she got caught up, and I know it's overwhelming to see the, one of the loves of your lives, fine ass, tall ass Aiden in Abu Dhabi. I too would have fucked him probably. He looked good in Abu Dhabi and I would have fucked him in Abu Dhabi. Oh, he looked good, but I just didn't like the reaction towards Charlotte and how like snippy she was. And she was like, you just mad because you think that your husband's going to cheat. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> Carrie, <laughs> Carrie, <laughs> ma'am. She should have got her ass beat. She was like, just because, just because you're scared that he's going to cheat on you. I'm like, bitch, we're talking about Harry. Yes, here. that was fucking, that was so rude and snarky. And I, I'm happy she apologized, but it just was like, all Charlotte was saying, and you know, we know who Charlotte is. Charlotte is the person who's all about love and marriages and she's old school. So She's a friend. You may not agree with her, but you didn't have to be snippy. You could have just been like, Charlotte, I see what you're saying. I'm still going to go to this dinner with him, but I respect you and I love you. And I'll, I'll give you guys updates when I come back. I love it, Nakia. Oh my God. So freaking good. That is why she's terrible in my book. Because I put a little pull up on Instagram, like why is Carrie terrible? So I have a couple shout outs that I wanted to give into. And my first one is from Hey Mo Love. And she's the one that said how she treated Charlotte in Abu Dhabi. That was not right. Monique. Yes. Shout out to Monique. Yeah, she. I was like, no, you're absolutely right. That was horrible the way she treated Charlotte. She's so on the money. And then my next one that I want to shout out, I want to shout out Abner because he says, remember when she kicked Samantha out of the book party that Samantha <gasps> planned for free? Oh my God, to get some D. Now listen. No, no, no. She kicked Samantha out because Samantha had a chemical peel. Oh, at the, the, oh my gosh, at the party. I think you meant when the book tour party, she was like, Samantha, big about to come upstairs. I need to get some dick. Oh my God. That's another reason too. Like, bitch. Okay. So she came up and said, I got you a smaller room down the hall. If I would have came up and bitch her in the bathtub, go fuck big in the smaller room. That part. So that's why I said I've been in situations where I've been on trips with girlfriends and we, you know, we have a communication plan when we want to get some D. One of us will, you know, venture out, go around the town. So I've had been in those situations. We never kick each other out, though. We would come upstairs and be like, girl, I'm about to get some D. Do you mind if I use the room? Keep the veil down and talk to everyone. You know what I mean? That part. I was like, Samantha, why did you take that off, though? <laughs> Girl, I got when my friends tell me they got a chemical peel, I was like, I won't see you for another week. Like, you just don't come out the house when you have a chemical peel. But shout out to Samantha for still coming. But I was like, girl, you could have just stayed home for that. I, you're my publicist, but I kind of want a chemical peel. Me too. My friend just got. I got a little. But mini you one. literally have to take a week. You literally off. have to take a week off. You cannot leave the house. I had a mini one with the facial I just got for my birthday, but it was tiny, and I was like, you know what? I want one, but I need a week to myself where I cannot leave this house. 
your face literally peels. It peels. So when I seen Samantha, I was like, yeah, she should have stayed home. Shed that skin, mm-hmm. honey. <laughs> I want to thank my guest, Nikia Monique. And thank you so much for coming on and being my sex in the city ambassador. Yes, I love that title. Thank you for having me and always inviting me on. You know, I can talk all day about sex in the city and I'm really excited for the show to come back. You guys can follow me on all social media at Kiki Boom Boom. Next week, you'll probably see a lot of Sex in the City shit go up on my stories because we're getting the new show December 9th. So people who know me, I, what I love is when the trailer dropped, I literally got so many DMs from people because people know me. I'm like, guys, I know. Oh, I know. Thank you so much for sending it. But yes, I love everything Sex in the City. I love these four girls. I love the show. I love you, Leanne. So thank you so much for having me on. Oh, you're so great. You guys, I am going to be covering. um, And just like that, the next episode of Everyone is Terrible is going to be a review on the first two episodes of Sex and the City. I think they're going to do two episodes. I think it's going to be a full hour. So it's going to be two episodes that they're going to be releasing. I will be covering that. And then get ready for the Christmas special. I'm going to be having a Christmas panel and a whole new Patreon show starting in January. I'm Hollywood Leon. It's my favorite day of the week. Make sure to give us a five-star review. If you want a Christmas card, send me your address this week. All right, kids. I'll see you next week. Stay terrible, bitches. Bye. Bye. Who's the most terrible of them all? It's Hollywood Leon.